Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a cross-platform character controller with rigid body in Unity using the new input system. The movement will consist of walking, running, jumping, climbing, sliding and more. This video will be the first of many others, so let's start. First go to build settings and switch to Android so we can test all platforms. Next go to package manager and install the input system. Once it's installed it'll ask you to restart. Now that it's restarted, go to your character model, I downloaded mine from Mixamo, click on it, go to rig and change it to humanoid and hit apply. Drag your character to the inspector and unpack it completely. Create an empty game object and make the player a child of that game object. The reason why I placed the player like this is because we'll need it like this for when we implement the camera movement. Create a 3D cube that will be the floor. Now go to the player transform and add a capsule collider and adjust it to your character dimensions, then add a rigid body freeze all rotations and change collision detection to continuous dynamic. Now create an input action, open it, create an action map, then create an action and call it walk. Make the action type a value and the control type a vector too. A WASD composite and assign the keys you want for every direction. For the gamepad and mobile, add another binding make the path a gamepad's left stick. In the inspector create a canvas and scale it with screen size, make an empty game object then create two raw images as childs of that game object. One for the joystick background and the other for the joystick, then scale them to your liking. Now go back to the player transform and add a player input component, set the action to the action we created earlier then change the behavior to invoke unity events. Don't forget to make the control path as gamepad's left stick. Now create a script call it movement controller, and open it with Visual Studio. First add using Unity Engine dot input system otherwise the editor won't recognize any of the functions we're gonna use. Make a vector 2 for the player input and a float for the move speed. The player will be able to walk and run so we need to add two public floats one for the walk speed and the other for the run speed. Create a public function and put input action dot callback context context as the parameter. This function will get the player WASD inputs. It's a replacement for the old input dot get axis raw that we used to put in the update method. Now create a function call it move player and call it in update. Create a vector 3 as the following and normalize it otherwise the player will move faster when moving diagonally. Create 
create a game object called player parent. We'll find this game object by tag. You can also make a serialize field and assign this game object in the inspector. In the move player function we'll make the player move by translating its parent transform in the direction of move vector with a speed equals to move speed uniform. Back in the update method we'll check if the player input is not null. If so we'll make the move speed equals to walk speed for now. In Unity, add the movement script to the player game object, then go the player input component and click events, then player, and assign the move method we created to walk callback context. Don't forget to make a tag called player parent and assign it to player parent transform. Let's test it now. Now for running go to input actions window and add an action call it running, action type to button then add a binding and make the path as the keyboard's left shift key, and save the asset. Now go back to the movement script, create a public method call it running, then create three booleans, is running stick, is running key, and is running. One for the keyboard, the other for the joystick and the last for the general boolean value. Now we will check if the shift key is clicked and held, if so running key will be true, and if the key is released the is running key will be false. Go to update and write the following logic, if one of the running booleans is true, then is running general value will be true, but if both are false, then general value will be false. In the move player function let's check if is running is true, then the move speed will equal the run speed, otherwise the move speed will be the walk speed. But first we need to check if the player input is not null. Back in Unity go to the player input component and assign the running function like we did earlier. For now let's make the camera a child of the player. We will work on the camera movement in the next video. To see if the player is running or walking we need to work on animations first. The movement script, create an animator call it anim and get the component in the start method. In the move player function if the player is running set the animator trigger to run, otherwise set it to walk, and if the player input is null then set the trigger to idle. Now back in Unity create an animator controller and assign it to the player, for the animations I downloaded them from Mixamo. Choose the animations you're gonna use click on them and go to rig, make it humanoid, copy the player avatar and hit apply. Extend the animations models, go to the animation and click Ctrl D, this will allow us to edit the animations, if we use them raw then we won't be able to edit them. Click on the player then open the animator window, drag the animations in, set them as the following, then add the parameters and don't forget to double click the transition coming from the any state and uncheck can transition to self. If you miss this step the animations will be stuck in the first fram looping.
And don't forget to click on the animations and check loop and loop pose. Let's test it now. When I click shift the player starts running, when I release the player returns to walking. One more important thing is we need to check if the player is grounded. Let's go back to the movement script and reorganize the code. Don't forget to create a layer call it ground, then assign it to the floor game object and in the movement script. Now for the joystick, the best method that will work for every screen size is collision detection. Go to the joystick game object, add a circle collider 2D to the joystick image, make it trigger, and a rigid body 2D make it kinematic. And for the joystick background, add a polygon collider 2D and make sure spread only on the edge of the joystick background image, make sure the two images have the same z-index. Create a tag call it joystick BG and assign it to the joystick background image. Create a script call it joystick. In this script we'll check if two images colliders have collided. The wheel set the is running stick accordingly through a function we're gonna create in the player movement script. Let's test if everything is working now. That's it for this video, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.